Hi again. Uh, I'm very excited to talk about this course uh, we took this year with Susie. Uh, the name of the course is uh, Identification and Remediation for Students with uh, Learning Disabilities or Problems in the EFL class. And really, it, it was a spe very special experience uh, to go through, and we would like to tell you about it. Um, first, I would like to just briefly tell you um, what we did this year. Uh, during the first semester, we learned a lot about different kinds of disabilities, um, different kinds of learning disabilities that can prevent students from um, easily going through the process of learning. Um, dyslexia or dyscalculia, all different kinds of uh, learning disabilities out there. And then we moved on to um, expose ourselves to different intervention uh, methods out there and to really um, explore the different uh, things you can do in order to help those students. The second semester is where uh, we're gonna expand on later on this presentation, is where we actually, each one of us met um, an amazing either seventh grade or 10th grade student from Beth Ashton in Hoda Shawan. And we assessed them and we came up with a plan uh, to help them with their English skills. And uh, we actually met them for um, weekly sessions and uh, yeah, well, you'll hear more about it later. It's the interesting part. Um, okay, the assessment part, which is where the second semester started. This is, second semester is a sort of a mini practicum. It's a hands-on experience where we got to implement the theories and the intervention methods that we were exposed to in the first semester. Uh, each of us met uh, either, as I said, either a 10th or 7th grader and we assess them using the ABLE kit. The ABLE kit is the assessment of basic literacy in English. This is a, a kit of tests. Uh, it was designed by Susie and Vora and some other people, I guess. Uh, no. Nobody else, just Susie and Vora. <laughs> just Susie and Vora. Um, it is a very, very useful kit for teachers because it allows to pinpoint the difficulties and to really, um, um, recognize and, and be able to address students' difficulties, which are very diverse and very unique, and then tailor-make tailor uh, intervention methods uh, in order to help those students with their literacy skills. Um, so why is kind of obvious, I think, uh, in order to be able to assess and pinpoint the difficulties and give uh, proper, and address them properly and, and allow children, pupils, to overcome or better their skills. Um, as I said before, the tool is an assessment tool. Um, it, it works, I think that's the next one, yeah. how? Um, it works in, on two levels. First, the t uh, this is very brief. If anybody wants more information, it's accessible, uh, or you can just ask us and we'll gladly tell you more. But um, basically, it, it, uh, it builds on two levels. First is a class uh, screening test where you give uh, uh, vocabulary and other tests to the whole class, and out of those you pinpoint or you, you draw the, the, lower, um, the lower level students. There are two lower levels, uh, and there's those who are really at risk and those who are um, sort of tending to, towards risk. Um, and those students the teacher can pick out and then do the individual assessments too, which we're going to elaborate on in a second. Um, and those individual assessments is actually what we did with our uh, BE students, med action students. Uh, each of us had the kit, we had to print it out, we brought it with us to the assessment uh, session, and we sat with them for about 45 minutes and gave them those tests, which really um, assess their knowledge. Their, it, it gives a, the, the test, the individual tests, assessments can provide a, a, a snapshot of where the student is at a certain point to know where their disabilities or their uh, difficulties are and then decide what you want to work on in order to uh, make it better, to, to improve. Um, so the uh, individual diagnostic tests are what we did. These are the, category, the categories that the t uh, tests um, work on or examine. Phonological representation, uh, phonological awareness, graphing phoneme correspondence knowledge, decoding high-frequency words, and decoding low-frequency words. 
And that, this way you can really map out students' difficulties and be able to address them. We're just gonna show you really briefly an example of the phonological awareness uh, uh, test. For instance, you sit, the, the way the tests are done, you sit in front of the student, they don't see the, the, the sheets of, of assessing because it's not really about getting it right or wrong, it's about knowing where they are in order to be able to help them. There's no right or wrong. You need to evaluate where they are. Um, so this is just a really brief example. Um, say beat. You say it in Hebrew, obviously. Tagid beat. Achshav tagid tamilashu bliatzil be. And then it goes to say. Beat. Thank you. Um, and so it goes on. This is a phonological awareness uh, uh, assessment. And then comes the mini practical. <laughs> this is really, really. This is the highlight. This is the. This is what you, why you should be taking this course. Really. <laughs> I was looking at you, I was exactly that. Okay, go. Okay, so uh, as Ifat said, um, we gave them an initial assessment with the ABO kit. We actually uh, went to their school at Bet Bedekstein and Rhoda Sharon. And we met them for the first time. We had a little uh, interview. We collected uh, all the data that we needed. And we went back home and we analyzed the data and we came up with a plan. <coughs> and goals, um, their goals and our goals and how to make their English better and maybe there are other goals, not English related, that we can get on the way. Um, during the semester, we also had midterm assessment and now we're working on our final assessment, meaning during the whole uh, process we have, we're gonna reevaluate and maybe change our goals if necessary and we keep uh, checking ourselves all the time. Uh, the structure of the, the program was uh, weekly sessions with our uh, pupils for 45 minutes. And the second part of our lesson was a uh, meeting with Susie and the assistants, um, <laughs> amazing Carol and Georgia, and uh, really getting uh, the information that we need, maybe some tools, and if we have questions on how to go on, if we're not sure about what we're doing, this was really helpful. Very important one thing, uh, the way the, the weekly <laughs> sessions go is that we have to prepare a lesson plan every week. Because actually we're teaching. It doesn't, <coughs> sometimes it doesn't feel like we're teaching, but we are teaching. We have to prepare a lesson for every week. We have to reflect on what we accomplished during the session, during the meeting. Um, we get feedback from Susie and the assistants. Um, and there, this is where the review of the goals comes in and we have to adapt and adjust our goals, our, our long-term goals, our short-term goals, in order to focus our, our work with the students. Okay, so just a brief uh, background on these two. Rega, <laughs> Rega, Rega. This is Omer, this is my student, and this is Arad, Alisa's student, and, and they're both, obviously. Incredible, 10th uh, graders, uh, highly intelligent, um, and you know what, they really, they, they like English and they want to be there and they want to do this and they showed up every single week even though they had other plans sometimes but they showed up and they co cooperated I mean to the best of their Sorry. abilities and okay you'll hear let, let's hear a little bit about um, each one of them let's give them the <laughs> Okay, so Arad, uh, again, he's a 10th grader, and his, um, the main things we worked on were vowel sounds and diphthongs, which he didn't know at all at the initial assessment. And another part of our work was vocabulary and conversational skills, and this uh, directly relates to his personal goals, because when I first met him and I asked, what are your goals, he said two amazing things. One of them is he wanted to be able to have a fluent conversation over Skype with his cousins abroad in English, obviously because they don't speak uh, Hebrew. And the second thing he wanted to, to be able to do is to become a computer programmer like his older brother. So both of these goals require a um, high level of English and he was really motivated throughout the whole time. And two um, amazing activities I would like to show you here. <laughs> One of them is the astronaut activity. Uh, 
here we try to work on both fine motor skills and vocabulary. And I found this little kit that has um, colorful dough in it and specific uh, instructions about how to build this um, cute little astronaut. And I made uh, vocabulary cards with words um, related to this subject. And as, as you can see, he did an amazing job uh, creating this uh, little thing. And he loved this activity, so y you can also see it outside. And I brought some um, on the exhibition table. I brought some other um, models as well, so I can give him uh, this Thursday at our last meeting. And another amazing thing we did this past Thursday is a Skype conversation. I created a scripted conversation for us on cards, and we moved to two different spots in the in the college, and we actually had a Skype conversation. And I can tell you that it was incredible. He was confident. If you would sit where I sit and look at him at the screen, you will never know that he's reading from cards. He spoke with confidence, and I was impressed. And that's it. This is beautiful. Art. Um, Omel uh, set out very specific goals during our first meeting when I did the assessment. Apart for all the apart for all the difficulties, the, 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 the objective difficulties that he has in learning, he doesn't write physically. He doesn't write. He doesn't hold a pencil. Uh, and one of the he, and, and actually the only goal that he mentioned that he wants to achieve in our sessions is to be able to write. He wants to write. He doesn't hold a pencil, but he wants to write. Um, so that was obviously, that became my goal as well. Uh, in order for him to be able to write, I had to teach him and do a lot of pre-writing activities. I had to build up, first of all, his uh, motoric abilities, and second, his confidence that he can do this. So I adapted, as I said earlier, I adapted many, many, many uh, pre-writing uh, activities that I took from L1 kindergarten uh, level, uh, and I adapted it to, to his um, abilities, such as forming letters with Play-Doh. Um, this is actually the thing that happened on Thursday, where we did a lot, of, there's a whole booklet outside in the exhibition hall, if you're interested in seeing all the activities that we did, um, different scissors cutting, we actually started every session doing exercises to enforce his shoulder muscles and his finger muscles, physical exercises with music and dancing. and. Um, um, just many, there's a walk the letters thing, which is brilliant. I drew his, I'm uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to say, uh, I, fo I decided to focus, to make it personal and relevant to him, I decided to focus on the four letters of his name. That's what we'll be working on this whole semester, writing his name, which hopefully he'll do on Thursday. Um, so I wrote down the letters on, in chalk, in big chalk, big letters on the sidewalk, with the directionality of how the letters should be formed, and he walked the letters for, five, for four consecutive weeks. He walked the letters. First, he imitated me. I walked and he followed. Eventually, he did it himself. And the last time he did it, he didn't need the directionality. He knew how to do it. Then the next time we went, which was after a break, a three-week long break, he did another activity in which I referred him to the walk the letters assignment activity that we did. I asked him, do you remember how you walked the O? Did you walk it this way? Did you walk it this way? And he hand drew in the air the O in the correct manner three weeks afterwards. This is a, a, a boy who has great, great, great memory difficulties. And, and it worked. It worked. Actually, the kinesthetic activities really, really work. They, 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 they put a mark in your brain somehow, and it works. So uh, on Thursday, he held a whiteboard marker, and he, I, I put up the, the sheets on the outside part of the window so that he could use them as guidelines, and he chose four colors, and he, drew his, he, he wrote his name uh, in four different colors on the, on the window. Um, and the other thing that I did, because of the assessment, I realized that Omer has some difficulty with uh, uh, vowel sounds, uh, that vowel phonemes. And that was the other thing that we focused on, Le less in a less to a lesser extent than the writing. Because this was his goal, which I wanted to achieve, uh, but I didn't want to neglect that. So I uh, I prepared uh, like uh, Alisa, but differently, a vocabulary book using um, long short sorry short A and E uh, sounds. This is just 
tip of the tip of the iceberg. Uh, but it's somewhere to start, and the book, uh, the vocabulary book, is gonna go home with him on Thursday. Hopefully, he'll use it and enjoy it. Um, I think the most important slide in this presentation is coming up. I think we're both very, very excited. It's our personal reflection of the process that we underwent, which is actually very, very personal and very, very emotional. Um, this is a process. It's it's a process. It's empowering. It's, um, you have to experience it, basically, really. You, you really owe this to yourself. Susie said last Thursday that Ortal, who was, who was a, a graduate of the school and is now teaching in Bet Action, and she's the one who actually promoted this project, uh, came to Susie and said to her that this is something that every student should be doing because this gives you the tools to deal with every possible learning difficulty out there in every school, not a, not, a, not a special needs school, just in every regular school, there are kids who need this attention. They, they need to be, you need to know how to address them. You need to know how to cater their needs, to, to their needs. Um, and and where, where did this come from? I got lost, sorry. That's just very, uh, so, so this is, um, yeah, so Alisa will go first, and then I go. So um, it's really hard to summarize an experience like that, uh, mostly because it's still sinking in and it will probably continue to sink in uh, as I continue to study here and to become uh, the teacher that I want to be. But um, again, I think the most important thing I've learned from this experience is that you, you must try multiple things and you must attack the problem from all different directions and you must keep trying and tell yourself that it's possible and believe and then something will work and I don't know if you saw the vocabulary book that I introduced in the morning but through Arad and through his experience um, of learning that it's okay to admit that I don't know a word and I never met this word before I, I, know, I just learned for the first time now it's okay to admit sometimes that I made a mistake all those things reflected back to me, and I've learned so much from this experience, and I'm really thankful to Susie for the amazing, amazing, amazing course. Thank you. Um, I chose to end with uh, just quoting from my mid-semester uh, uh, assessment, and just I'll read it out to you. I am grateful for this, this is literally, I, 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 I capitalized the grateful. In, in the assessment. I am grateful for this opportunity. I find myself looking forward to the weekly meetings with Ona, and although at first I had some doubts about how much English is actually being spoken and worked with, I realize now that what we do is just right, both for Ona and for myself. I became aware of my English versus Hebrew usage, and by having focused my goals, which I did over the course of the semester, I'm able to create experiences of success for Ona in every lesson. I think that is the most important thing. We need to create experiences of success for each and every people.